Hey everyone, it's Nick from Share Dividend here, and in today's video, I'm going to be telling you how you can calculate the expected total return for any stock. Uh, now, before we begin the content of this video, I just want to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel because we're going to have some great content coming out through the rest of 2018 and beyond. The first thing we wanted to discuss with respect to expected total return is what is expected total return. Expected total return is the complete return that investors receive throughout the lifetime of an investment. It's composed of dividend payments and changes to a company's stock price. Now, if we were talking about something different like bonds, for example, the components of expected total return are going to be different. But for stocks, expected total returns are composed of changes in stock price and dividend payments. Calculating the expected total return of a previous investment is actually quite easy. There's five basic steps. The first is to find the initial cost of the investment. The second is to find the total amount of dividends or interest paid throughout the life of the investment. The third is to determine the closing sale price of the investment. And the fourth is to add the sum of dividends or interest to this closing price. The last step is to divide this number by the in initial investment cost and then subtract one. To provide an example, imagine that you had an investment whose initial cost was $10. And throughout the lifetime of that investment, you collected $1 of dividend payments. At the end of the investment, you sold it for $20, which means that the sum of your sale price and dividends was $21. You can calculate the expected return of this investment by dividing $21 by $10 and then subtracting one. This gives you a total return of 110%. Now, in real life, expected total return calculations are difficult because we're talking about things that are going to happen in the future. So this means that there's not as much certainty with all the variables that we're doing math with. Because of that, real life total return calculations are a lot more difficult. We're going to walk you through one so that you can see how to calculate expected total returns for real world investments. In real life, expected total returns are composed of three things. A company's dividend yield, its expected earnings growth, and the expected changes to the company's valuation multiple. Now, each one of these individual components is complex on its own. So to make sure that you guys fully understand this, we're gonna use an example of the Coca-Cola company. The first thing we'll need to do is find the company's dividend yield. Dividend yield is calculated by taking a company's annual dividend payments and dividing it by its stock price. Now, in reality, people tend to not use this formula to calculate dividend yields because they're readily available through multiple data sources. Google is a great search engine for doing financial research because it integrates with Google Finance to give you on-the-fly financial data. So for example, if you want to find Coca-Cola's dividend yield, you can just search up a stock quote for Coca-Cola and that information will be automatically provided to you. This will bring up a box that has Coca-Cola's stock price, its stock chart for the past day, which you can switch to five day, one month, three months, or maximum. It also has the company's dividend yield, which you can see here. We usually do our financial research to one decimal place, so we'll say that Coca-Cola's dividend yield is 3.1%. So this gives us the first component of Coca-Cola's expected total returns. It's dividend yield of 3.1%. Now we just need to figure out Coca-Cola's expected earnings growth and the expected changes to Coca-Cola's valuation multiple. The next step is to determine a reasonable estimate for the future earnings growth of Coca-Cola. Now, these estimates can be internally generated, so determined by you, or they can be externally generated, so computed by some professional analysts and then relied upon by you. If you're uncomfortable making estimates about a company's future earnings growth, we recommend using the analyst estimates wherever possible. Now, individual analysts can be wrong and sometimes are. So the best way to do this is to gather a bundle of analyst estimates from your stockbroker and then average them out. Usually stockbrokers will have a research platform that provides future analyst estimates on an average basis that looks something like this. So as you can see here, Coca-Cola reported $2.08 of earnings in 2013 which declined to $1.91 in 2016, and the company's earnings are expected to rise to $2.38 by 2020. We need to take the long view here. So the more years that you can incorporate into your analyst estimates, the better. In this case, we would recommend taking the Coca-Cola's estimated growth from 2013 to 2020, which represents annualized growth of 1.9% per year. Now, this might be lower than Coca-Cola's actual earnings growth, but we believe that it's very important to be very conservative in these calculations wherever possible. And we'd much rather undershoot the company's earnings estimates than overshoot them. So we're gonna use 1.9% for the company's expected earnings growth moving forward. The next thing that we need to determine is the expected change in Coca-Cola's valuation multiple. Nobody really knows for sure what Coca-Cola is really worth. 
With that said, businesses are valued based on multiples of things like earnings, book value, or free cash flow. For most businesses, using an earnings multiple or a price to earnings ratio is an appropriate way to determine its fair value. The way that this incorporates into expected total returns calculations is because companies tend to revert to their long-term average price to earnings ratio over time. What that means is if a company is trading at a price to earnings ratio that's far above its long-term average, then that valuation multiple is likely to contract over time, which will decrease that company's returns. Similarly, if a company is trading at a price to earnings ratio that's far below its normal level, that ratio is likely to rise, which will boost total returns moving forward. Here's how we would quantify that. We need to determine a company's current price to earnings ratio and compare it against its long-term average. The difficult part about this is finding historical data for valuation multiples. We prefer to use value line data wherever possible. Value line is a subscription-based research company that is actually quite expensive. But fortunately, you can usually access a free subscription of value line through your local public library. Value line provides research sheets for most publicly traded stocks that look something like this. There's a top section of charts, a middle section of data, and a bottom section of written qualitative analysis. If you zoom into that middle section, you'll see that there's a part that focuses on average annual price to earnings ratio. Here's what the data looks like for Coca-Cola. The company's average price to earnings ratio over the past 15 years has been 20.9. Right now, Coca-Cola's price to earnings ratio is 25.5. As you can see, Coca-Cola's current price to earnings ratio is significantly above its normal level, which means that the company's valuation is probably going to contract, which will reduce total returns moving forward. Before we can determine how this will affect Coca-Cola's future total returns, you have to determine a reasonable length of time over which its valuation will revert to its historical average. Five years is usually safe, although longer periods of time are more conservative and shorter periods of time are less conservative. Here's what you do. You take the company's current valuation multiple and you divide it by its long-term average valuation multiple. Then you raise this fraction to the inverse power of the amount of years it will take for this mean reversion to occur. After that, you subtract one, and this will give you the annual impact on the company's future total returns. In the case of Coca-Cola, this gives us a negative 3.9% per year impact on expected total returns. This 3.9% is only valid over the next five years, and that's if the company's valuation multiple reverts to its historical average. You can also change the mean reversion period if you'd like. The shorter the period, the greater the impact it will have on your expected total return calculations. The longer the estimate, the more conservative you're being. If we put these three components together, here's what we have. Coca-Cola's dividend yield is 3.1%, its expected earnings growth is 1.9%, and its expected change to its valuation multiple is 3.9%. Adding these together gives an expected total return of 1.1%, which is actually quite poor for a large publicly traded stock like Coca-Cola. Accordingly, we would not rate this company as a buy right now, although due to its strong brand, it would probably be a buy if its valuation multiple contracted to below its long-term average. Thanks for watching today's video. I have three pieces of homework for you. The first is to perform your own expected total return calculation and email it to me at nick at suredividend.com. The next piece of homework is to like this video and leave a comment telling us what you thought of it. The third piece of homework is to subscribe to our channel if you want to learn more about investing in high-quality dividend growth stocks for the long run. Thanks for watching and have a great day.